me today to talk about the upcoming Colombian Day Parade and Celebration. I have three members of the Colombian Sin Fronteras group. So joining me, I'll let you say your name and the uh, position that you hold within the organization. Good Caroline? Morning. Hello. So thank you for the invitation thank on behalf of Colombianos Sin Fronteras, which is a nonprofit organization, Colombian Without Borders. And my name is Caroline Puma, and I'm from Public Relationships. Okay. Hello. Uh, thank you for inviting us. Uh, my name is... Uh, Elias Raga, and I am the treasurer, second year as a treasurer, and uh, thank you. Okay. Okay, my name is Guillermo Pierna Gorda. I am the president of the Colombiana Sin Fronteras. It's my second year the president, and the second time here too. Okay, thank you all, and welcome to the show. I cheated a little bit there. I was trying to get away from not saying your name, but I'm going to go for it anyway. Guillermo Pierna Gorda. Gorda. Very Did good. I get close to it? Yeah, was it, was yes. it yes. Okay. <laughs> and Caroline Puma? Yes. And Elias R Raja. Raga. Raga. Very good. I'm proud of myself. <laughs> now, the group, uh, Colombianos Sin Fronteras, uh, when was the organization formed? That was formed in uh, June 2008, exactly five years ago. Uh, due to uh, the floodings in our country, a bunch of uh, commercial, you know, business people of the city of Elizabeth got together mm -hmm. and we started discussing how we're going to help our country due to all this tragedy, you know, the tragedy due to the floods. So we started getting together thinking about what we were going to be doing to raise money to help them. And uh, on a couple of meetings, I was invited and uh, we came out with that name, Colombianos Sin Fronteras. It was, a, it was a funny night, you know, trying to find out a name, you know, and then all of the sudden we come out with Colombianos Sin Fronteras. Why Sin Fronteras without borders? Because uh, we thought, you know, we can continue with this organization, not just to help Colombia, but we can always help, you know, other uh, nationalities, which is what we have been doing. And when you say Sin Fronteras, what does that mean? Without borders. Without borders, okay. And since the um, start of the group, how many members do you have now? At uh, this moment, we have about 30 members. And within those 30 members, where, do you have to be Colombian to join the group? Not at all. Not at all. We are proud to say that we have uh, four different nationalities, you know, members of four different nationalities. We have Puerto Rican, Cuban, Ecuadorian, and Carolina, Dominican. and Dominican, you know, Republic. And that, and that was a great reason to create the group and everything, um, and I'm proud of you. Do, but uh, do you just help Colombians in need, or do you help others? No. Like I said before, this is without borders. We have helped uh, Peru. We have helped Ecuador. Uh, Colombia, of course, Haiti. We raised a lot of, you know, uh, we did a lot of fundraising for, you know, Haiti when uh, they have the earthquake, and, um, and Chile, too, yes. Now, in a few moments, we're going to discuss the uh, big parade that, that I was attended last year. I had a great time. But before we get into the parade, what other events uh, do you organize during the year? We do have uh, about three other parties that we do, and uh, we, that's uh, one of the ways that we raise money. But uh, we do have uh, semi immigration seminars to teach the people how, to, they, can, how they can become uh, American citizens. So that's, you know, one of the events that we do. We do, uh, for, San for Hurricane Sandy, we did help, uh, mm. you know, raise some uh, food, cloth, which we distributed to, uh, you know, we went to uh, Staten Island to distribute that help too. And uh, we had the parade and, you know, I think that's it. And we have been also mm. hit by disasters here in the United States. Mm -hmm. So we mm -hmm. were able to put our efforts together for Sandy, mm. and now for the new devastation that they had in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, yes. Mm -hmm. So your outreach is beyond just Elizabeth? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Now, um, how many years has CFS, before we even go talk about that part of CFS organizing parade, I know you have no control over the weather, but last year was what, about 90, 100, what was the temperature last year? 110. 110. 110? Yep. And I mean, Everyone still marched like it was 70 degrees. There was a lot of energy, a lot of smiles. No one didn't, didn't let the heat bother them. What's going to be the temperature this year? Anybody know? Want to predict it? We don't know. We don't know. Last year we asked for a sunny day. We didn't expect to be that sunny. <laughs> but 
our efforts were, were there and the people show up to support us and we expect the same thing this year. Good. Now how many years has CSF been organizing the uh, Colombian Parade? Two years. Two years? Yes. And was there anyone in particular who started the parade? What made the parade come about? I mean, what was the was there a need for it? Was there a cause for it? Or I believe that the, the need have, has always been there. Okay. Uh, there is a majority of residents, uh, Colombians, that live in Elizabeth, and a lot of other communities have parades. Uh, pre the, our president Guillermo came with the idea: why not? Uh, Let's organize a parade, and I feel that it was very needed to mm -hmm. highlight the culture of Colombians in the city of, Eliz of Elizabeth and other uh, towns because last year we had people that came from all over. Right. Now the next question, I think I know the answer to this myself, but if you're a non-Spanish speaking person, do you think they would enjoy the parade? Yeah, yeah, no problem, because it's a cultural and, and, and typical uh, uh, things from my country and other countries, Uruguay, Peru, Ecuador. Yeah, you don't need to speak Spanish mm -hmm. to enjoy culture, and right. I think it's going to be a great exposure of their their culture, uh, their values, their music. Right. It's a family event. Now, I don't speak Spanish, but the parade itself translated a lot of things to me. And I enjoyed it. So, I mean, it's for everyone to enjoy, and I think all should come out and take part of it, and they'll definitely have a good time that day, as long as it's not 110 degrees. Hopefully not. <laughs> I want to say something, yes. you know. They have, they have said that Colombia is the second co happiest country in Latin America, and that's one of the reasons why the parade was <laughs> like that. Everybody's happy, no matter what. No matter right. how hot it is, everybody's happy. And all the cultures, even this non -speaking, non the, the non-Spanish speaking, right. they're going to enjoy because all you need is two eyes. That's it. Mm -hmm. right? Now, I felt sorry for some of the people dancing down the street in those outfits. I mean, one guy had on the, it was like horse hair around the leg. What is that called? The uh, amarras. Amarras. So that had to add to the 110 degrees, so that probably made it for him 150 <laughs> or whatever. But he danced like it was in shorts or whatever, exactly. just having a good time exactly. in a, a five degree day. They or whatever. were sweating. But yeah. They, were, they didn't stop. That's great. Now the parade route, um, what's the route and what time does the parade begin? It's at one o'clock mm -hmm. uh, from the city hall. Take the Elizabeth Avenue, Broad Street and Morris Avenue, cross in front of the uh, Colombian District okay. in uh, Morris Avenue. Was it difficult coming up with that route or was it uh, Something we said, this is the way to go, or? That's the way we did it last year, and it was a little difficult because the floats, they need to be a little bit lower mm. to go underneath the bridge. But the people who work with us, you know, they really work with us and they lower it. Because, you know, those floats, they're over 13, uh, 13 feet high. Right. But they did some work on it to lower the, so they can pass the, through the bridge. The road was, uh, stated last uh, two years ago uh, right. when we organized it then we had to thank the city of Elizabeth the the major of Elizabeth Mr. Bowish mm -hmm. and their staff because they helped us to put this together mm -hmm. along with the police department and the fire department that felt that it was a safety road. Okay and in addition to a tall float you had a stilt walker on the float which made it even bigger so if the float was 13 <laughs> feet you had a guy that was 8 feet made it 21 feet so <laughs> yes. it was a lot of attractions there uh, the, mm -hmm. the girls on there uh, throwing out the smiles and the dancers from the little ones on so you had everybody the entire family was involved uh, the young man with the big sombrero hat what nationality did he represent does anyone remember with the big sombrero hat there's a young uh, young kid there he had a, a big hat do you know which culture he was representing or I don't remember. I, I big, don't big white hat. I don't, I don't recall exactly, but we were big fortunate enough to have other countries coming mm -hmm. along on the parade, Bolivians, uh, Peruvians, Ecuadorians, right. Uruguayans. And for a parade that size, how long does it take to put together a parade of that, of like that? How long does it take? It takes a lot of work, and mm -hmm. without the support of every single member of the organization, this can be impossible. Mm -hmm. Everybody's putting their time. Uh, we meet every week, and we've been organizing this parade since last year. As soon as we finished the parade, next week we were already talking about the following year. 
So there's no break, no vacation, you just go right back to work. Yeah. We don't take vacations. Colombianos Sin Fronteras are hardworking members working hard for one goal, help the needy. And that's good, that's good. We're going to take a break and we're going to come back to the second half of the show and we're going to talk some more about the great works you're doing and the upcoming parade, okay? Okay, thank, you. thank right. you. Thank you. Stay tuned for the second half of our uh, city and we'll be back with the second half after these words. Thank you. Welcome back to the second half of our city where we're talking about the upcoming Columbian Day Parade and celebration. And as we were talking earlier, I just remember some of the other great uh, feats and something, I don't know if you guys remember, but there was a couple on a float just got married or they're getting married. How, how did that work and where did they come from? Most of our sponsors are business right. around the area that they decide to rent a float and mm -hmm. that's the way that they support us financially in order for the parade to happen. It was this company for wedding planners, okay. and it was a surprise for us too, and I believe uh, the people who were watching the parade, they should feel very honored that this couple decided to get married in front of everybody. So during the parade route, they were not married yet? They were not married, they stopped right in front of the stage, and they say, I do, in <laughs> front of all of our eyes. It was a very, very nice, surprising experience for us as well. So that was great last year. So are there any special performers new to this year's parade? It is full of surprises. That's <laughs> why we invite you to come. Um, especially this year, we choose mm. the team of Barranquilla Carnival. Okay. Barranquilla Carnival is one of the most important folklore parades that they have in Colombia. And mm. this year, we are inviting dancers that are coming directly from okay. Barranquilla. We have about 40 people invited that are uh, coming from um, Barranquilla, Colombia, and this is a tradition that they have since 19th century. Mm. Most of the Colombians don't, but there are other generations of Colombians that have been born here, and we want to bring this, not yeah. only to them, not only to Colombia, but also to the city of Elizabeth and to the people who decide to join us that day. Now, in addition, in addition to what you just mentioned, are there any other uh, special performances taking place? Yes, once again, once again we're going to have other countries exposing their culture, mm -hmm. their dancers. Uh, we have the Uruguayans joining us, Peru, uh, Bolivia, which are great and amazing uh, mm -hmm. performance yeah. that they had it last right. year. Uh, their custom, it's, it's very nice, it's very right. heavy for the weather, but they, it's their culture they, and they love to expose right. it. Now I have a question for you. Now last year you had quite a few floats in the parade. Are you gonna keep the same number or are you gonna increase it this year? How many floats this year? I think we have seven floats this year. Wow. So far, yes. And uh, we're trying to, uh, last year we had motorcycles. The guys complained that they were too hot because they, the motor gets hot. Yeah. But we're trying to get uh, nice uh, antique Car vehicles. And of course, all the, how do you say, allegoric cars. Mm -hmm. Okay. Supporting us. And for the parade this year, who are some of the sponsors? Uh, we have Twin City, we have uh, major sponsors, and uh, still time. Still time for more business if they want to join us to contact us. Okay. And, but you don't know if someone's getting married this year or not? You don't know? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now, you guys have a magazine that CSF uh, is putting together for this event. You want to tell us about the magazine? Yes. The magazine was uh, another idea that came in, in, in this presidency, and it, it is a magazine that is going to talk about Colombianos Sin Frontera. We want people to know what we do, who we are, and once again, please remember that this is a non-profit organization. Mm -hmm. The magazine is going to talk about culture, it's going to talk about Colombia, it's going to talk about different aspects of uh, law medicine that are happening right. in the States. It's a very informative magazine, and also we have a lot of sponsors and contributors that are making this happen. Right. Now, to the average viewer, you come to the parade, you have a good time, you clap, you cheer, and you go home. But to you, the workers, I know it's a lot going on behind the scenes. So what's the hard thing about putting on a parade of that size? Putting everybody together. You know, we start sending invitations as soon as we finish this parade. But it's hard for, I guess, for Spanish people to, you know, to answer right away. Mm -hmm. So it's two weeks before the parade and then people are telling, oh, we want to join. So it's, it is very hard, but uh, it's okay. It's, we do it from here. Right. So we love it. Now, as you mentioned, Spanish speaking, at the um, podium, 
Will there be an English and Spanish speaking master ceremony announcing all the parade participants or will it just be Spanish only? No, yes it will. Last year we combined it. Mm -hmm. I was the, actually the one translating and we have a professional uh, person also doing the Spanish part and we will be doing the English part. We want to make sure that everybody understands okay. what's going on. And I know it's probably a hard part to come up with, but who's the Grand Marshal? And is there any other honorary guest in the parade? Yeah, the Grand Marshal this year is uh, Luis Alejandro Medina. He's a very important person. He's a journalist for Telemundo. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the last year we tried to bring uh, our marshal, but uh, this year is coming. Right. Um, Luis Alejandro Medina is one of the icons of the Colombian mm -hmm. community. I would say that uh, every Colombian feel proud about the achievements that he have done in the United States. And obviously, we are counting with the authorities. The Council of uh, Colombia mm -hmm. from New Jersey is a very strong supporter of our organization as well. Now, as you mentioned earlier, the day after July 1st, where we get together and start planning, is it difficult picking a grand marshal? Mm. Uh, it is difficult. Uh, yeah, it is. We yes. have to think about it. Right. Uh, but, uh, number one, and everybody in the organization votes for the person, and we have to agree with it. Yeah. And also, once we f we choose a person, sometimes it's their agenda. Right. So it's not an easy thing. To no. Mm -mm. Okay. Not at all. And parade of this size, going up Elizabeth Avenue, down Broad Street, on to Morris Avenue. Is there a best place to watch this parade? Oh, any place. The people can stay in any place. It's uh, okay to to uh, see the, the, the parade. Okay. It's like a carnival. You can watch it from yeah. either side of the street. Anywhere you stand up, you know, you're going to enjoy it. Everybody has the same view. And once we come to an end, we end at Morris Avenue? Yes. Yeah, Torch, 7-Eleven uh, mm -hmm. of Morris Avenue. Yes. And what takes place there at the end? Uh, we're going to have the stage uh, right in the corner of Side Street at Morris Avenue. Mm -hmm. That's where we're going to be, you know, all the personalities and That's authority the and special guests. So once the parade is finished, we don't leave and go home. There's more to do after the parade. Well, one of the reasons why the parade has been done in Elizabeth in ends on Morris Avenue is also to bring business back to the city. Mm -hmm. uh, after the parade, we don't have uh, another activity from Colombianos in Frontera, but we hope that every person who comes and join us stay in Morris, stay in Elizabeth, go to the restaurants and support the economy of Elizabeth. Right. And there's a lot of great food on Morris Avenue. So yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> a great taste and a bunch of restaurants to choose. So if I walk into a restaurant, what should I ask? What's one of the best dishes to look for? Bandeja paisa. Say it one more time. <laughs> Bandeja paisa. And that's? It's the most typical you know, And what dish. would that be? Is it? Uh, Rice, beans, the sausage. You know, the sausage, the like ground meat, an egg, a piece of avocado, and, and a piece of plantain, yellow plantain. And what about empanada? Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> You have to put the spicy on the empanada to enjoy it. Make it spicy? <laughs> no, there's hot all sauce. the have this, a little hot sauce over there, and you're going to love it. And a royal is a, uh, what's a royal? Royal? A royal. A royal? A R R O. A rose. A rose. What is that? Rice. 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 Okay. So an empanado and a rose. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the parade starts what time? One o'clock. One o'clock. And the date and everything? What's the date? The June thirtieth. June thirtieth. The parts from the city, in front of the uh, city hall of Elizabeth, is gonna go along Elizabeth Avenue, um, Broad Street, towards Morris Avenue. Okay. And if someone wanted more information, how do they call you? Who do they call? And how do they? they can call the president at nine zero eight nine zero six nine zero six six one one one, or they can call myself too, which is nine zero eight seven six four zero nine three one. Or they can email us to colombianosinfronteras at hotmail.com. Our webpage is www.colombianosinfronteras.com. Now, you mentioned everything. No Facebook? You're not on Facebook? Of yet? course, yeah. we are on Facebook. <laughs> and where, where can they find you on Facebook? Colombianos Sin Fronteras. Okay. Um, 
with the upcoming, if someone will make a donation, do you guys accept donations because you're doing a lot of great work helping people who are going through hardships? Of Absolutely. Uh, without donations, we will not be able to be here. The reason of the parade, besides exposure in the culture of Colombia, is also to fundraise. Mm -hmm. And all the monies that we obtain are to help others. And as uh, Elia said, not only Colombia, but other countries that need our help. We concentrate in elderly and children. Okay. Now I know you guys are involved with planning, but do you get to enjoy the parade the day of, or are you busy working? The way we enjoy it is seeing all the people that come mm -hmm. to watch us. That's how we enjoy it. Now do you get to march and participate in the parade, or are you just behind the scenes with a clipboard and whistles? No, no, and I, uh, we participate. Okay. You know, I walk, yeah. And did you, did you walk in the parade last year? I actually was on the stage. Okay, so you didn't walk the parade? No. no. Oh, you took the well, easy route out in the no, I, actually, <laughs> I actually did the hard work behind the stage before the floats depart. Uh, we have a great team uh, doing the mm -hmm. logistics of the parade, yeah. and then I had to run to the stage. <laughs> right. And did you march in the parade? Yes, of course. He's the president. Okay. And you know, mm -hmm. we, we think about it and we see the parade, but we don't know the planning. So as he's marching, you're at one end on Morris Avenue. They're at the other end at City Hall making sure everything uh, starts off and goes smoothly. So it does take a lot of planning. So I commend you all and ask you to keep up the good work. So before we go off the air, is there any last comments you want to make or anything you want to tell the public? Thank you. I want to invite the community, not only the community of Elizabeth, but everybody around to come and enjoy one of the best parades that we're going to have this year to celebrate July 20th, which is Colombian independence, and to come and see what Barranquilla Carnival is. Hey, you you can I say something in Spanish? Yes. Okay. Uh, you can invite a toda la colonia colombiana de New Jersey y Nueva York, Pensilvania, para que nos acompañen el día 30 de junio, a partir de la una de la tarde, en este fabuloso desfile que vamos a tener en Elizabeth, New Jersey, a partir de la una de la tarde, por Elizabeth Avenue, Morris Avenue, Broad Street y Morris Avenue. Los esperamos, va a haber muchas sorpresas para disfrutar un domingo en familia. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for tuning in to this segment of Our City. Once again, I'm Alonzo Jones, sitting in for Mayor Bowich. Have a safe and wonderful week, and thank you for watching Our City. Thank you.